Before starting needle sculpting, we just mark out the face to see where we need to put the features. So starting about half a centimetre on either side of the eye and what we're looking at is where the top of the ear is so that's where your eye is going to go across there so so we mark a little bit down there like that and it's, uh, you can just curve it slightly like that just with your hands going like that curve it slightly and you've got the eye going out there now you can turn it upside down to see if you can get it the same on the other side. So half a centimetre in and curving in the same way. And we want from the top of the ear, it will be, is where the eye is going to go. So that's how you work out where the eye goes. Then a curve around the nostril flare just there and just mark underneath where the nostril will go. The mouth um, can be, uh, it's a pointed little mouth. So you could, lots of things you can do, um, you can squeeze that in if you want to and it, it, it will look different. Um, in this case I'm just going to be um, putting my thread right underneath there so that will make a top lip. And over here will be where it will go to. So this here will be like the cheekbone. The cheekbone is just under, just beside the nostril. So we mark that in, in a little slant down like that on both sides. Not making a big, big red mark there because not sure how that's all going to go yet that's basically it we will also be um, possibly going to the side of the ear on each side the most important thing is the way it's stuffed so it's not a hard stuff it's also not soft so there's, there's a little bit of a wrinkle there but that's not nothing much the rest of it is fairly firm. So, I have threaded the needle with a good metre of strong thread. So, I'm going to, and it's a fairly narrow needle as well. It's got a bit of a bend in it because I've used it a few times. But, um, velour really does need to have... Um, a narrow needle if you can get it. A thick needle, velour just does not like thick needles. So I'm going to go in through the hole in the head and I'm going to come out at the top of that eye. Oh, I really should put a net a knot in the bottom of it first. Okay. Where I've come out of, I'm just going to go back in again, scoop up the stuffing and come out on the opposite side. So this is where the eyebrows would go. So I'm not making a big deal about that. Coming down a good like half a centimetre and exit at the beginning of the last stitch. Take the stitch down, 
scoop out the stuffing and exit at the bottom of that last stitch not pulling it tight at this stage another half a centimeter scoop up the stuffing and exit the bottom of that last stitch just tugging it gently now because I'm curving it another half a centimetre stitch scoop up the stuffing and exit at the bottom of that last stitch so I'm roughly doing about three stitches down So that's one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three. Right. Scoop up the stuffing. Exit at the bottom of that last stitch. So I've got three stitches now. I'm just going to gently squeeze. So I've got a little bit of a shape there. I'm not going to go too hard. I'm going to just hold it with my thumb. And insert the needle, just take a tiny stitch beside it scoop up the stuffing and exit in the nostril not pulling on that yet take a tiny stitch beside that, scoop up the stuffing and come out at the bottom of that last stitch Now I'm going to pull it up and I'm going to take a tiny stitch to the side and go back into that nostril hole and that holds it. Now I'm going to cross over to the other side bottom of that last stitch on the other side and we're doing the same thing again tiny stitch scoop up the stuffing come out in the nostril don't pull take a tiny stitch scoop up the stuffing come out at the bottom of that last stitch Now you can pull it up till they're both even. Hold it with your thumb. Take a tiny stitch to the side and go back into that nostril hole. Oops, don't catch the ear. And that holds the nose. Now I'm going to take a tiny stitch. I'm going up to the eye so I don't want to come right at it right there just want to leave something like half a centimeter if I can or something like that now I'm taking a good half a centimeter and I want to come scoop up the stuffing and come down to the top of that line that we made then I want to go to the bottom of that line scoop up the stuffing, really important here come out at the end of that eye this eye length is about the length of your thumb just so that you know so you can see I've got a nice cheekbone there pull that in take another half a centimetre and I'm going to come out at the top of that stitch again so I've scooped up the stuffing here as you can see pull that through now you've got this line here this line here we want to gently squeeze and gently pull so 
pressure on the each end of the eye and that just gives a nice little shape now I'm going to take the thread over to the other side and you can see how that's going to go so I'm going to insert it at the beginning of that uh, line there just going to grab a pin from somewhere you can put that just wherever you want the midline to be insert the needle and scoop up the stuffing and come out it just beside the eye there so now I'm just going to be squeezing pulling that pin in so I need to hold it now take a half a centimeter stitch scoop up the stuffing and come out in the corner of that eye the sorry mouth hold it keep that th tension on that thread insert the needle at the bottom of that line scoop up the stuffing come out at the corner of the eye I'm just going to extend it make sure the eyes are the same length that always helps so I'm just not going to pull that too much yet scoop up the, the half a centimeter scoop up the stuffing come out at the corner of that mouth now we do our squeezing again So we've just about got it. And now I'm going to insert the needle. I could actually take it over to the, to the top line again and I want to exit at the in the ear there where we marked it before and that just holds that take us another centimeter or half a centimeter stitch and go right through to the top of the other yeah that just pulls that in a little bit don't want to pull it in too much insert the needle again another half a centimeter come out at the back of the ear just behind it a wee bit try not to catch it so is it both ears are snagged just grab a little bit of the uh, fabric and just so that'll just hold it back and then just slip through to the other side about the same place grab a piece of the fabric pull it up just make a holding stitch so that the ears are just just nice and I think we're about done and 
then you can take that pin out and just with the needle just shape the mouth the way you want it to go so that it's just gives a cheeky little look okay and then we'll colour it I'm using uh, Prismacolor Red, uh, Crimson Red that is, and I will use Prismacolor uh, Copenhagen Blue, and I've got a black as well, and I'll be using uh, black and white fabric paint. I'll also be using a small skewer and a small paintbrush so the first thing I want to do oh and I'll be using a, a brown pigma pen and probably a black gel if I can find it yes there's the pigma pen and my very favorite hybrid gel but you don't have to use a hybrid gel. I think any gel pen will, black gel pen will do. So we'll just see how we go there. Uh, and I'll probably also use a uh, a bit of chalk pastel in a flesh colour. This is I use um, Faber Castell because it's such a lovely pink and it goes so nice with velour so just telling you that that's what I'm using okay so I again use the red um, pencil to mark out roughly where I want to go and so everything now is um, uh, we're, we're just marking out in measurements so I'd start with the lips at the lip there is just a very tiny rub so that it's only going to go there and it's just to indicate a bottom lip we don't want to have anything too pronounced um, you can also rub it into the cheekbones there and that just that gives the shape uh, also for the nostril which will be going over and um, again around the nostril flare which is nice and rounded and that just shows us where it all is happening so now we're just going to mark out the bottom of that eye going across to where the, the stitches are and on that side so you can get an idea of um, make sure that the length is right um, oh. so now the top of the eye um, is a, again half a centimetre so just go up about half a centimetre and to get it even on both sides I always tip it upside down so you can get a better idea something like that then you can just um, put a line down each side that gives you a rough idea of where the eyes are going to go uh, the next thing I do is to use the white paint Oh, before I do that though I just want to mark in the eyeballs so I'm just using blue today but you can use green or brown so I just want to fill in that whole bit of the eye that we've worked out tip it upside down again to get you to get it right
so just make sure that both eyeballs are the same size and round is good doesn't even matter if it goes over that line you know because it won't be seen okay then we use the paintbrush with a bit of white on it sometimes I just use a skewer for this but today we'll just try to get it as right as we can use your thumb if you get too much on there mostly I want to get the white around the outer part of the eye I'm not worried about getting it right into the corner because it's the eye that we're highlighting not the corner of the eye so I don't want to have too much paint going on something like that water helps then uh, um, this is where I use the black gel pen um, I just want to outline actually before I do that I will put in the pupil because that helps to centralize the eye so I'm just using the blunt piece of the skewer at this stage you can see where I've used it before so just um, dab a bit of black paint on the end and try to get it in the middle this might actually be a little bit too big for this eye didn't get it exactly right but that's okay we'll work it out so now I just use that blue again now outline the corner of the sides of the eye not the tops and the bottom and hope that you've got them right okay so now I want to mark in the top of the eye lid and a little bit on each side of the bottom um, just for something different I'm just going to put a mark like that there so that goes down there and that there I think we'll just take it to there and make it a kind of elfy eye straight lines down there and into the corner there and then using the uh, Pigma pen just put in a bit of an eyelid also use that um, lightly in the mouth and in the nostril um, 
would just put in the eyebrows. I'm just going to use this black for the time being just to see if I like it. Not too bad. This is a new Intense pencil. Tip it upside down to see if I get it right. And the last thing I want to do is to take the skewer again. Oh, one of the last things. Just dip it in the paint. Dab it on the eye in exactly the same place on both sides. And because one eyeball is a little bit bigger than the other, I'm just going to dip it in black and just make that one there a little bit bigger too. And I'm just taking that black just a little bit down the eye. just gives the idea of eyelashes and the same here carefully It's like a zigzag. And just maybe with the blue, colour the top of the eyelid just a little bit. And I'm just going to use the red again now on each side of the eye you don't even have to go this far if you don't want to but I just think it gives a little bit of drama and down the side of the nose and maybe on the tip of the nose And last but not least, we'll use this uh, chalk pastel. Uh, you can, I have got a brush and, and I will probably uh, blush it, uh, brush it and blend it, but adding this colour to the cheeks just adds something to the look, the overall look of the doll. Oh no, 
we'll leave it at that. Um, just for the last little thing, make sure that the ears are a nice shape. Just put a little bit of red in that ear. A little bit of red and a little bit of black. And also a little bit of black there. Not too much, but it just gives a bit of depth. So that's how I needle sculpt and paint a face, which is likely to be different every time I do it. Thank you.